Hi, I'm Essie Stacey. Uh, hopefully you have uh, already watched part 1A, this is part 1B of the Movement and the Brain series. On this slide I just want to give you an overview of the five areas where we can begin to win back a 1%, win back the 1%. And here they are. Exercise, coordination and posture, primitive reflexes, swimming and music because in playing a musical instrument we're actually moving. So they're the five areas that I'm going to give you a brief overview of in the next few slides, so keep listening. Okay, let's look, take a little look at exercise. This is a tree found growing at the top of a hill in Eastbourne. You can see where the wind has been, has been constantly blowing in uh, one direction, has blown it to grow in that direction. And of course that tree wasn't born that way, it grew that way. And we have a saying in sport and exercise medicine that form follows function. This means that what we do to our bodies has a bearing on how they grow. And in that same way we can talk about aerobic activity. Aerobic exercise increases the blood flow to the brain. And if we increase the blood flow to the brain, we get more oxygen to the brain, it allows more brain connections and more brain activity. Climbing increases the number of cerebellar connections. How fascinating is that? So we talked in the last uh, video about how the cerebellum is smaller in children with Down syndrome. And here we are now looking at taking back a 1% climbing activity. So climbing frames, and rough and tumble, uh, climb, climbing over, over things. They're activities that can actually increase the number of cerebellar connections. So that's good news. Okay, let's take a, a bit more of an in-depth look at coordination, posture and balance. Quite a lot of studies have been done looking at in, into these areas and we know that poor spatial awareness correlates with poor reading. Posture control and balance are important for language. Belgao, this, this study was quite interesting because Belgao was a teacher, he was also an engineer, and he noticed that the students that walked up normally in his class had reading difficulties. Other studies showing that one-legged tests, so tests of balance, were associated with worse, worse language skills. Look at some studies done by Cohen and Raz, who found that the developmental motor stages coincided with mental development. So if you were delayed in the motor stages, they you also associated with mental, delay in mental development. This isn't true across the board, but this is what they found in their study. They noticed some associations. Like crawling associated with depth perception. Standing unsupported with speech development. Standing with the eyes closed was associated with the child's ability to internalise complex actions and understand things without seeing. Again, these are not absolute truths, they're research findings, but they give us an idea of how coordination, posture and balance affect brain development. Let's look at some more studies by this same group who looked at the associations between postural 
immaturity. And all of these issues. So they looked at, they found that if the child had poor posture, so the posture hadn't developed as well as it should, then you had associated with that poor visual and acoustic, so listening skills and acoustic sequencing. P poor postural, um, postural ability was associated with inadequate perception and reproduction of graphic forms. You could say writing for that. It's going to affect the writing skills. Poor postural uh, ability associated with confused spatial organisation and short-term memory and clumsiness and language deficits. So it's clear that there are associations between movement and the brain. So what can we do? We can attempt to win back some of those 1% by doing more of these balance coordination abilities. I'm sure if you're, if you're a parent of a child with Down syndrome, you will have seen, uh, particularly if your child is over the age of six months or so, you will have seen that, that your child has movement um, issues that, that really could do with some help. And the happy news is the problems that we see in our children can be remedied to some degree. So there are things, there are those little things, we can win back those little gains in order to make a big gain. And certainly coordination, posture and balance is something that our children can work on. So have a go and have fun doing it. Thanks for listening and do tune in to the next video where we'll be looking at primitive reflexes and what we can do about those as well as swimming and music. Thank you. You can make a donation to support the Trust at www.hannatrust.org.